Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Work Tech. It's George LaRock, and I'm excited to introduce the Work Tech community to Kodo People, another impact Work Tech company. And Kodo People describes itself as a platform to revolutionize the way organizations understand and manage their talent. Um, they apply behavioral economics to the process of talent selection. And I'm joined by co-founder Francisco Reyes Perea uh, to learn more about what that means. Welcome, Francisco. Hi, George. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm, I'm super honored to be here with you. I love your podcast. Uh, I love the community. And it's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of uh, at Kodo People. Well, it, I'm excited to have you here. I've gotten to know you over the last uh, few months and uh, have taken uh, a close look at Kodo People. Uh, and I'm excited to uh, tell the community about what you're doing. So let's start with you and Kodo People. So, you know, we know you're the uh, founder. Uh, t tell us about yourself and uh, and a quick intro to Kodo People. Thank you. Yeah, um, I was working in, in consulting projects uh, um, uh, during the last seven years, applying scientific methods to to be able to transform organizations, to be more productive, to perform better, to enhance the way they work. Uh, we were applying uh, neuroscientific methods, uh, psychology, or experimental psychology, and also behavioral economics. That is where we ended up uh, doing now in Kodo People. And, and I'm really passionate about why people behave the way they do, um, understanding human behavior and human decision-making. And that led me to to found uh, to co-found uh, Kodo People at this time. Um, and I'm really excited to see what is coming next for us. Uh, Kodo People is a, a emerging tech provider uh, applying behavioral economics. Uh, to study human decision making and to be able to provide some insights to our organization, our clients to to be better. Cool. So um, behavioral economics, um, you know, t tell us about uh, how you, you know, sort of the why around Kodo people, like why behavioral economics and, and how does it help a little bit of that sort of origin story and and how this how this really started yes uh perhaps many people has uh have heard about behavioral economics i think is 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 trending it's something trending above all in the in the states um uh, because of richard toller or daniel kahneman or cast Sustain, for instance there are the 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 the, the fathers of or dan Ariely, of behavioral economics but it, it, it is this sign is more than nudging people to do what we want to do, right? Okay. And and we we use what we call uh, economic games, uh, you know, part of the game theory, uh, scientifically talking, to assess um, uh, people's behaviors through decision making choices. Uh, and then it's it's really different. It's a very different way to assess uh, people's behaviors. You know, you know. Well, we are living the era that soft skills are really critical. Mm. To be able to succeed more than more than ever, I would say uh, we can check uh, technical skills or hard skills. We can check uh, CVs. We can we can get some referrals. But if you are not paying attention to soft skills, perhaps you are gonna you are not gonna be ahead your competitors anymore, right? Um, because we need culture fit. We need cohesion. We need to be together as an organization. Yeah, I you know the there's a talent shortage, there's a skills shortage. Uh, you know, companies have leaned in on into training uh, on we'll call them the hard skills, on the job skills. Um, you know, beyond the base, and so these soft skills uh, are really what's differentiating you know success. Um, so, so how does that work? How does how does it uh, how do you engage with an employee uh, and a company? Like how does this manifest itself for for the for the folks that experience it? Yes, it's, it's the first time that we are seeing a tool like this, like Kodo People. It's the first time that we are putting all the scientific knowledge 
and this way of assess people's behaviors in a SaaS tool, and that is pretty cool with a very easy workflow. And then you, we are very different than ATSs, for instance, or mm -hmm. or, or uh, HR systems. We are complementary to them, uh, but we are not. We are not the same. Exactly the same. We put it into, into a flow, very simple, where you can manage your candidates. Um, and then you only have to add candidates to the system and then create your own projects. If you are hiring, for instance, a sales rep, and then add those candidates to the project and then assess them. Talking about CI module is the, the module that we are we are selling right now. Yeah. Uh, there are three phases. You have the screening one, the second one, the second stage is behavioral style. And the third one, this is the uh, a very cool thing in our humble opinion is called onboarding. You know, we consider onboarding as a part of the process. Uh, and then we need to get some insights during the onboarding process to be able to, to be successful, no? to avoid costing different things. Each phase lasts 15 minutes. Okay. You know, it's super, super adaptable, super flexible. You can decide to apply one, one stage or not. Uh, our recommendation is to do the three. Uh, or to run the three phases, uh, starting uh, by screening one. In 15 minutes, you're going to get a real a clear picture about the candidate's behavior. And then you can figure out if it's worth it to move to the next phase or not, or interview them or not, right? Uh, this is screening one. You're going you're gonna to get insights about the uncertainty management, adaptability, and, and job interest. That is pretty critical. It's pretty common for every company in the world. Um, and then, you know, you are in 15 minutes, I insist, a clear uh, radiography or behavioral radiography about the, the, the candidate. And then, okay, if I get, for instance, above 80 in the screen index, you know, this person has to go to the next phase so clear, right? And then you can start to check CV, hard skills, whatever. But you are saving a lot of time and a lot of money, right? Right. Uh, applying right. applying uh, this this tool. Right. So uh, the that experience for the employee or the candidate um, is uh, it's not like a traditional assessment that we think of with no. uh, sort of behavioral uh, assessment. So I want to be behavioral economics versus behavioral assessments. So what what are the types of scenarios that are presented? Uh, just you know, high level example to the to a candidate. Um, if you have some simple uh, well, ones off for, the top for, of your head, yeah, that is a great question because it's different. One thing is behavioral assessment that we have uh, in the market a lot of them yeah. uh, based on uh, self reported uh, questionnaires or surveys or whatever, right. and this is super super different. Is decision making based? Candidates uh, haven't uh, to respond to any question. Okay. They have to make choices that are incentivized randomly. That is the main the main thing to assure that we are going to get uh, the real. We are going to capture the real behavior, right? In a game, no gamification. People tend to to to, to get confused about this. It's not gamification. It's a game where people have to make choices. What do you prefer to get one hundred bucks today? or 150 in a month, those kind of things, mm -hmm. right? And why money? Because money is the common the common currency. Everybody understands money uh, in the same way. Uh, I don't care if you are a millionaire or not, but you know, the how you understand money and the concept is is common for everybody in the world, right? That is one of the reasons that this, is, this science has standardized this type of assessments, right? And then we are, we are you know, we are here to disrupt a market, the market of assessment that it traditionally has has um, applied uh, psychometrics or surveys or or those kind of things. Regarding candidates, we are improving their experience because they don't have to answer one hundred questions anymore, right? right? They they automatically log in. They have to make choices, and then it's done. Fifteen minutes, you know, is a very very different experience, and also they can win money. They can they can earn money uh, through the experience. No, why not? Uh, it's randomly incentivized, but they have the choice to to earn money through the process. This is super innovative. It's the first time that we are doing this, um, and you know our experience. You know, um, with some clients that we have 
candidates are really happy to go through these kind of assessments. Also, they want to be assessed because they, they, they want to avoid some biases or subjective uh, judgment, right? Yep. We could say, and, and it's only 15 minutes. Uh, and I think it's a great time. Uh, it's a great slot no? to, yeah. to, to be assessed. Yeah. So, um, so what types of companies uh, have you found are ideal for Kodo people? Well, our ideal companies are SMEs, uh, SMEs, sorry, okay. um, but also, you know, corporates, why not? Um, our product is super scalable and stable. Um, we have three plans, basic, professional, and business. And then, you know, depending on your needs, in hiring, you can you can you can buy one plan or another. Um, for corporate side, I would recommend you know the business, the business one because you can assess across the year many candidates. Also, we, we know well, no, to hire one person, you have to assess, uh, you know, 30, 40 people, right, uh, right, to find the right one, and and then you know those plans are adapted to to those kind of things. Our ideal companies are small and medium size companies and we are targeting but uh, we, but we are not limiting um any size or or type of company yeah what what kind of uh feedback or uh have or what kind of experience have the companies that have tried it had so far what have, what have you heard from them yeah uh first thing is uh how different it is how different it is uh, you know, we have one in Spain, a multinational uh, called uh, ISO Tools. They are operating in, in Latam, but also in Spain. They are multinational. Uh, they are hiring a lot. Um, they were using TTI. And then it's not, it's, it's a super complex, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can use TTI for some specific situation that where you are hiring, when you need to save time, when you need to fit. Uh, candidates to your culture, um, you need something more agile. And, and this is super agile because you can send over uh, all the assessment at the same time and, and then you get the screening one and then you, you make decisions. The good thing is you're going to get quantitative and qualitative information. There is not something only qualitative of subjective. You, you get an a score. What I mean by that is, for instance, if I'm assessing your uncertainty management, for instance, uh, we present the information in a very different way, right? More informative. It's not the typical bar, uh, zero from 100, zero bad, 100 good. It's not about that. Right. You, you have a bar, you have the mean, and then above the mean, below the mean, and then you have the meaning, what that means to be in the, on, the, on the extremes, right? And, and if I'm measuring uncertainty management, you're going to get a score. You're going to get, for instance, 90 above mean. Yep. Uh, that is extreme uh but also you're gonna get the benchmark uh against the pool of candidates that you are assessing that is pretty cool and also you're gonna get information about what that means to be in the right screen above me right and then you quickly can make decisions about the candidate uh you don't necessarily have to be an expert on behavioral economics i would say um you have to know a little bit the foundation but uh, once you get familiar with the, the, the outcome, with the report, with the information that you get in the dashboard, uh, you can make decisions real quick, yeah. uh, really fast. And, and that is, a, that is a one thing that we are really proud of um, because you get the dashboard and you automatically can know if you are assessing a, a, a cool people, right? If you have in hands a cool you know, pool of candidates to, to, to join your organization. And it, it's um, it, it's you have those three phases, so th the entire package gives you perspective as to you know for, with someone that you're you, you're hiring and onboarding, um, how to work with them and how they make decisions. It gives you some context uh, as uh, is, is that a fair assumption um, as 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 you're starting to work with them. Yeah. For enough, um, and you know well uh, how 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 many times we we hire a person, and then it's not the right person. You know mm -hmm. the cost of the bad hire is too high now more than ever. 
uh, above all, because we are, you know, people are are deciding where to work and how to work and and, and what kind of project they're going to join, uh, right? And and we need to assure. Um, Mary said we need to be more choosy. I would say, and and we have to consider part that traditionally has been assessed through direct observation, uh, but how to do it when you don't know the person. Yeah. Uh, the best way to predict future behavior is knowing the past behavior, right? That is what we provide. And that is super powerful because you are going to get the context to say, oh, listen, this person probably is not going to ghost in us during the onboarding process. Yeah. Probably this person, because we know them better, they are going to fit really well with this team or this unit or this, you know, whatever. And for me, that is critical. Uh, and and also, it's better for them. Yeah. Right? We are eliminating some uh, subjective and unconscious biases. We are human. And obviously, we are subjective. Yeah. Uh, it's because of that that we need some tools to help us to to make better decisions. Right. Um, uh, yeah. So what's next? What's next for the, the company, the the product? Uh, where, you know, where, where are you headed? Yeah, this is super exciting for me uh, because I, I'm an Spaniard. I'm talking from Spain, but also we have a, a, an office in the in, in the States, uh, in Vero Beach, uh, in Florida. And, you know, it's super exciting that John Valdino, the president and co-founder of Humanizo has joined us. Um, um, That's great. Early this year, uh, it's great, and and we are starting to prospect in the states, and I'm super, super thrilled um, to see what is coming out for us in this in this part. But also, we are working in our product map because uh, you know the way that we have with couple people is to be able to cover the full cycle of talent under the umbrella of behavioral economics. We attract attract and, and hire people using behavioral economics, then how to motivate them, how to keep them engaged. This is the motivation module, the second one. Mm -hmm. And finally, how to help them grow. No, the third one is gonna be career growth module. Uh, during this first quarter, in this 2023, we hope to release the second module motivation, where right. we are gonna assess uh, team dynamics, alignment and engagement behaviorally talking, um, you know, again, uh, we are trying to to help our organiz organizations to be better and to care for their people. I think this is a people first approach, right? Um, you know, caring for soft skills is important. Um, it's not only the, the hard skills, because as you know, there are gonna be jobs in the future that don't exist and then, you know, we are, we are going to have to be skilled, relearn, unlearn sometimes. Yep. Um, that soft skills are there forever. And then we have to emphasize uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I think we're, things are moving so fast. Uh, you know, tra transformation. Um, I, I think a lot of companies, uh, or maybe not companies, but a lot of individuals viewed transformation as a project, uh, and it's it's really just a re repetitive cycle, right? It, we, we're learning that by the time you've transformed your business, whether it's driven by economic issues or technology or a change in your business model, um, but you, you get to the end of that and then the next one comes, right? The, the, you've, you've changed your business model based on customer appetite, uh, based <laughs> on their interests. And now, uh, the economy is throwing you a curveball. You need to transform again and the skills required and the people required and the roles, uh, are, are can all change. Um, so I, you're right. I think it's an, it's a, it's a never ending cycle and having, that inventory of of these soft skills and understanding who would be best where in in what kind of situation I think will be a competitive advantage uh, for for a company. I, I really think so. Uh, precisely this morning, I was watching a video by Gary B. Um, uh, telling 
uh, uh, of talking with an entrepreneur and saying, oh, my best employee is going to is gonna be out, right? It's going to go away. Uh, yeah. how, to, how to approach this moment, right? We, we, uh, we are seeing this tendency, people working, currently working, applying to 15 jobs to, to get an increase in salary, whatever, or talent saying, oh, listen, uh, I need to find another place to, to be motivated. I think those are problems related with soft skills. Uh, yeah. with human or, or humanistic uh, approaches. And then um, I think we, we are in the right spot. Uh, we are making behavioral economics accessible in a very comprehensible uh, way. Um, that is, is going to be our, one of the, our main contributions. And I'm happy to apply science to, to improve people's uh, employees' uh, lives too, right? Yeah. So where can folks find out more about Kodo people? Where, how, what's the easiest way? Uh, the easiest way is to find us in kodopeople.com. Uh, you're going to find a pretty cool blog talking about behavioral economics, you know, how to apply that, you know, uh, talking about trending things in the HR and talent and space, but also they can find us uh, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, literally everywhere. And, and please reach out. I'm always uh, 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 very responsive on LinkedIn and Twitter, above all. And, and thank you for this opportunity, George. Francisco, thank you. I know how busy you are. Uh, I know you've got a lot on your plate. Thank you for sharing your time and uh, telling your story here at WorkTech. Thanks a lot. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you.